All right. So hi, everyone. So I didn't give the organizer um, a brief introduction of myself. So I'm going to introduce, my, introduce myself briefly here. So I'm working at Iwa Women's University in South Korea after working at the American Museum of Natural History for 10 years. So that transition happened during the pandemic. So I moved back to my home country. So I'm still affiliated with the museum as an adjunct professor. Um, so I've been in this evolutionary in evolutionary protistology field for more than 20 years. So I've been working on a lot of cell culturing, finding new species, environmental sequencing, um, uh, protist symbiosis, and also more lately, uh, protist genomics. And today I'm going to talk about this particular project that we've been working on for a number of years, and which is about uh, inferring uh, basically about the eukaryotic tree of life. So I just placed two pictures that I took some months ago. And the, the left one is bifurcating tree. The another one is, I thought interesting and might be relevant to this talk, the conjoined tree. This is, um, this happened when two completely different species live um, growing next to each other, sometimes they're joined. Anyhow, so this work was largely done by these people on the slide, Zyrus, Maurer, and Kala, who is also in the audience, who will, he will talk about um, his stuff in 30 minutes, and Sally Waring, Aaron Heiss, Alexandra Pitis, Yang Zhou, Gai Yelshan, these are the main contributors to this project. And I have, there are other co, uh, other contributors and people help out with the project on this list. So I want to thank the Simons Foundation who provided a bulk of the funding for this project. And also the funding was provided by this private donor, Janine Luke, who live in Manhattan. All right, so this project started uh, in 2015. I can't believe it started that long time ago. I didn't know it was gonna take this long, uh, but at the time uh, we thought that it's gonna be a very exciting project, potentially exciting. So at the time when we were looking at this multi-gene based uh, studies on ETOL, eukaryotic tree of life, we often found a pattern that depending on which groups are producing trees, we often see inconsistency and also conflicting result. So, and, but the interesting thing is that uh, when we look at all these different sets that people were using that actually all converged onto only a one or two kind of uh, original source. So we sort of wanted to address that issue by starting um, this um, ETOL project from scratch and uh, coming up with a uh, uh, completely new set of data for eukaryotic tree of life inference and thought that maybe we may come up with a better resolved tree. Anyhow, so the project consists of a three components. One is to identify the protein markers that are suitable for uh, basically ETOL study. The second uh, part of this project involved the acquisition of a new genomic and transcriptomic data from some of the uh, uh, evolutionary important protist taxa. And then the third part is incorporating everything. So the, these markers, new data, and then the existing data publicly available sources. And that also involved a lot of um, um, processing of some tricky data I will talk about later. So during the phase one, so describe is we started from the 41 full, fully sequenced uh, eukaryotic genome from diverse uh, eukaryotic uh, groups. And, and I guess this part was done mainly by Alexandro Pitis, uh, who was working on this project for about a year. And he used these BLAST CT, uh, BLAST similarity searches and the nouveau clustering using what is called Markov cluster method. So he started from the more than 700,000 protein sequences. And after clustering, it got down to 60, more than 68,000 clusters. And about 800 of them had uh, pretty good taxon coverage. Uh, so at that point, the project handed over to uh, Dr. Aaron Heiss, who worked hours and hours and month after month uh, kind of manually expecting the um, alignment. And after, I think maybe two years, he identified 473 of the clusters 
uh, having at least one clay usable for uh, phylogenetic analysis at a deep level scale. And after this point, Sally Warren joined in the lab as a postdoc, and she and I and others, including Zyrus, we started to incorporate bulk of the existing transcriptome and genome data available in the um, uh, public database. It took a very long time because it took you know, multiple time because once we finished with the incorporation of bulk of data and then these, uh, these new paper came out uh, publishing just a new transcriptome and genome data. So we repeated this for, I think, five times. I, we hope that we don't have to do it again for this uh, publication. So we ended up with the 317 uh, protein-containing uh, data matrices. So I just added this uh, drawing because this um, phase was felt like a, just a manual labor-intensive farming. And then Zyrus show up um, two years ago. And in addition to utilizing this data set, he proposed that he also wanted to come up with um, a data set using uh, the Phylotol pipeline. This is a pipeline that he was working as a graduate student at Laura Katz Lab at Smith College. Um, so, uh, so I guess I'm not gonna go into details. Zyrus is the one who knows how he did it. So he used existing curated orphan and cell based gene families, blah, 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 and then <laughs> guidance too. Anyhow, so this process uh, is like more akin to robotic farming, even though there's an operator, you know, outside this uh, scene. Anyhow, in the end of this protocol, he identified, well, the pro pipeline and identified 385 proteins uh, suitable for uh, this ETOL study. All right, then uh, we quickly look at the, uh, did a, he did a gene uh, functional analysis and uh, bought, so this number, 106 and 76, these are um, referring to the number of the proteins um, for each of these uh, two data set, 317 data set, 385 data set. But anyhow, many of these genes are fall into these uh, gene, uh, what is it, information processing category, like a translation. RNA processing, transcription, and replication, but then also some of the gene involved in other cell processes and also um, energy metabolism also ended up uh, being in this final set. All right, the phase two, let me make sure that I'm not, okay. So acquisition of new data. So we, um, we, so we got a mass, a sort of a transcriptome, and genome data from uh, these nine organisms. So the Ophorina is uh, Jacobit and uh, Protus, and this Imasa on the right, top side, Malawimonas, these are the Protus that we isolated from the lagoon samples from the Solomon Island. Uh, we also got the genome and transcriptome data from Cryptista, Papichomonas, Mantamonas, and Carmonas, Cryptista rumbia, Telonema, and two basally branching green algae that eat bacteria in addition to photosynthesizing. So we use, uh, we acquired a combination of Illumina and long read data, either PEPI RS2 or the mean ion data. All right, phase three, incorporating everything. So handling of, I'm not gonna go into all the details. Uh, so basically when we were um, incorporating the existing data available in the public database, so we, uh, try our best not to use a database that are kind of sub qualities because many of the produce, uh, for instance, transcriptome data have uh, kind of um, pretty substantial amount of other produce uh, data. So we sort of excluded them unless we can handle it with confidence. And these are the three particular group we ended up keeping, but we did a lot of uh, uh, additional step to really um, take care of the data impurities. For instance, telonema and paravora, these are eukaryovore. Data tend to have uh, other eukaryotic reads. So we did some additional kind of cross comparing uh, sort of step to ensure that we are not really carrying over uh, those of other eukaryotic reads. And also the tree building, I guess I'm almost running out of time, I think. Uh, so uh, this is pretty much done by Zyrus. So I feel so I'm presenting his results. So we, uh, he uh, built a tree using IQ tree, uh, and also he did analysis using asteroid and astral. 
and uh, radical analysis is also underway, which this is being done by APURVA. Uh, for IQ3, um, so Cyrus can tell you all the details how we came up with these models, but the, the, so we went with these two particular models, LG plus R10 plus F, uh, and the next model, LG plus C60 plus G and F is most complicated model. Don't think I have time to show you all the trees, but just going to show you two trees. So this is a tree based on 317 uh, protein matrix. And we, I guess, you know, the, yeah, I don't really think we have time to go into details, but this is a tree based on 385 proteins. The both trees are very similar in overall structure, except for the, uh, the position of the heptophytes plus central heliozoan. So here, heptophytes and he central heliozoan is sort of uh, um, away from SAR group, but in the, with the other data set, it just moved somewhat closer to SAR. But besides these things, uh, the basic structure looked very similar between the two. Uh, I guess since we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to show you the summary table showing uh, some um, like uh, just uh, looking at this particular node of interest. So for instance, if you look at the first line, we're looking at the, whether the analysis uh, recovered the monophyllid archaeplastida. It was the case for three of the, anal four, three of the four analysis. Uh, how about the archaeplasta plus cryptista? Three of the four analysis suggested yes. Excavata uh, never recover monophyly because of the Malawi monads. Uh, consistently uh, grouping with enchiromonads. So if you look at the, the third row from the bottom, Malawimonas and Caramonas union seems very robust and strong. Uh, the another one is that the, the TSAR hypothesis uh, wasn't, uh, was not supported in our, any of the analysis. So Tilonema uh, consistently uh, bred with Picozoa and Picozoa were not part of the Archaeplastida in our analysis. In, in other of the two uh, database um, derived analysis. Anyhow, so I guess then uh, there are more, obviously other deep nodes we can address, but then these are some of the take out, take, um, take home message. Uh, so anyhow, so the, this is uh, pretty much the last uh, page of my presentation. So from this study, we established two completely new sets of proteins uh, that are suitable for ETOL study, and many existing groups are supported by our data set, including opistocon, SAR, you know, the haptophytes, and so on. Uh, but some existing hypotheses like TSAR um, were not, you know, supported by our results, and new relationships are emerging, partly because we sort of uh, included a new data set. So that includes the uh, sister, uh, so close relationship between Picozoa and Telonema and the Encaromonas and Malayomonas going together. And we feel that the, the crumbs hypothesis and also Archiplastida hypothesis still seem require further scrutinization. For instance, uh, crumbs hypothesis was only supported when only very complicated model uh, of evolution was applied. So it's something like a, something to uh, go after, I guess. So uh, I want to thank again for all these key players for the project. Uh, and I also want to thank um, the organizer of this uh, symposium and uh, also the audience. Uh, I'm happy that the, after a number of years of efforts, finally the project is coming to fruition. So anyhow, so thank you. Great, thanks so much. Um, maybe a quick question. So when you say completely independent data set, what's the overlap between the existing data sets of you know, 300 plus proteins? I mean, presumably some of these are in both yours and, and the published data sets or not. So, so what you are saying is whether these, these two data sets are completely... No, I mean, between, between your two data sets and the published data sets, what so is we, the overlap between them? I see. Uh, we can take a look at them, but I can tell you between these even two data sets, I think overlap was like a less than 100. So less than 100. 
100 markers will overlap between 317 and 385. And I think that I, we can definitely can do it. Zyrus, you may have a number of the, not yet. Yeah, 